Hello and welcome everyone. Today I'm going to talk about an amazing feature which Azure brings in to really look into its state of resources and how you can navigate between the resources and find the relationship without really writing too many queries. What happens each of the Azure resources in the Azure Resource Manager con context are individual entities, but they sometimes get tied to each other. How do you see that holistic view and how do you figure out who is connected to what is all about this Azure resource uh, graph really helps us achieve. So to understand that Azure resource graph concept, you need to first understand what is this Azure resource graph. So as the word graph mentioned here, it is definitely identifying the relationship between each of the entities, right? And it is to design to help you extend what Azure Resource Management cannot provide you so quickly and easily. Because if you think about Azure Resource Management, right, uh, that whole thing provides the an ability to query various different subscription, right? And then you can actually get things done through many different ways. But if you have to do, let's say, complex query filtering, grouping, sorting, etc., those are something which is which are missing. How you find out things from a governance perspective, let's say an audit trail. What has happened to a virtual machine over a period of time? Does anyone make any changes? What are those changes happen to that? All these details, you can figure it out. When that virtual machine got shut down, right? Um, do you want to identify that? You can identify that. You can access the impact of applying policy in a large cloud environment where you have hundreds of subscriptions, thousands of resources deployed already. Now, this is really an amazing way to play around with it. And this Azure Resource Graph can be accessed via Portal, Azure CLI, PowerShell, and all the known programming language Azure Ship supports, that's .NET, Go, Java, JavaScript, Python, Ruby and through the basic native call. And then you can also use that through BICEP and ARM as well. So basically it's a bunch of things. Now, when you talk about Azure Resource Manager, it supports query over basic resources like resource name, ID, type, resource group, subscription, and location maybe. That's all, right? Now you have to, find out like what are the resources available in a specific location maybe you can do it in one query maybe you need many queries but let's see how this resource graph really helps us by achieving that by the way the resource graph supports the custo query language that's kql and you can pretty much use all the custo capabilities in the resource graph query so let's see what how it looks like. So let me jump into my Azure subscription. If you go to Azure subscription and you say all resources, let me search here to show you how you might find that. So if you say all resources, it shows you like that. This comes up with all the resources you have in your subscription deployed, everything, right? What you can do, you can export to CSV and filter it over there, but you can also open a query graph. Now, if you see that it is getting pre-populated, if I just go ahead and delete that, and I just say that I want to, uh, let's say, first find all the resources in my subscription. So if I say mm, resources, and just run the query. It's going to give me all the things which you have seen in the dashboard, right? That's, that's what. So this is one of the tables which Resource Graph uses. And when you use Custo Query, you can pretty much filter things based on the criteria you provide. So you can say that where type 
equals to and when you say equals to you must use this which is a case insensitive and then you start with this and one of the things i want to find out is the virtual machines so if you say compute virtual machines and if i run this query now it's going to go going to give me only the virtual machines i have in my subscription so you can see that i can now get all the virtual machines group by i can even um, define what all columns i need to project so we say project project and i say name and i say uh resource group that's it and then if i just type it if i just simply go ahead and remove this and i put it after this makes more logical sense run this it's going to go ahead and give me the, the virtual machine name and the resource group. And if you click on the C details, it will show you the record. You can say next, next. So when it is big, let's say you have many fields, you may not be able to view it properly. So in that, that case, you might need that kind of view. So for example, if I uh, try to add more and more type, subscription ID, um, ID, what else I have? Location. And I have uh, plan. Let's see what it gives. It should give me all the bunch of things. I can click on this. See details. Uh, it gives me this a nice view, which is easy to read. And I can just navigate through this. And I will get to see all the virtual machines, which are basically uh, created in my subscription. They are four in number. But if you have more, it will show you those more many number of virtual machines. So that's what the resource graph query is able to provide you the information. So you have got many different ways to play around with the resource graph. For example, um, you have got certain things like um, what all resource types I have created in this subscription, let's say. So if I just remove this and I say, project and I say type and it gives you statement um, completion in license also and then if I just run them you will find all the types but it's sort of like repeating right um, this is the same type it's basically the alert rule um, you can see that it's coming thrice now let me use a little custo filter to define distinct And run the query. And I can see that these types are kind of available. You can sort them, you can filter them, you can do all sort of things. So I have got uh, around 40 types of resources created in my subscription. So they are all um, created in my Azure subscription today. All the 40 these types of resources are being used, somewhat or other. I have created our, or it got created automatically through a management. Now, there is one interesting uh, thing about the resource graph, but um, really, if you want to go deeper into that, there are different tables available. So, for example, you have seen the resources, and there is a resource containers. And if you just run this resource container query, you will find that resource container is coming. It is basically the management group, subscription, and all these things. Uh, there are advisor resources, um, health resources, um, so available uh, resource health sort of thing. So if you just say health resources, that's one of the good things is that you get the statement completion. So you can see that it's, it's kind of like um, telling me something. I have not noticed it. Um, so let me go back. If I just leave it, there is an error. I have to remove it and run it. And if I click the 
details. I'm going to see that um, previous unavailable. It was unavailable due to some some re reason. Maybe some upgrade has happened in the hardware. So you have got Kubernetes configuration resource, maintenance resource, policy resource, which talks about the policy insight, right? So if you if you run the let's say policy resources and run the query, it's gonna go ahead and show if there are any policy available and will show up in the list. So this resource graph is is like an intelligent way to really navigate through your all resources. You can't make modification, by the way. So you can only read them. So it's like a read-only activity which you are trying to do. It's navigating through that. It's a reporting capability of the resources. You can do a join, right? You can define a limit of how many records, for example, it shows around 3,790 records. I am not interested in that. So I can say I can limit it. It's like a custo thing. So if I run this and I limit it to 10, only 10 records will be coming in this list. So it's kind of like a, like a, so you can see that there's a 10 records only showing up. So it's only a few records coming up over here. So you can, Choose the four uh, columns you want to display. You want to also check whether there is a value null. You want to do a distinct. You can do an order by. So that's also possible. So if you can say that I want to order by type uh, ascending, you can do that. You can um, you can define a filter based on like whether a VM is started or stopped. So all the supported Gusto query language elements like count, distinct, extend, join, limit, order, parse, project, sort, summarize, take, top, union, where works, right? So that's what, like it makes somebody's life pretty easier if you are into ops, you might be already using the Gusto query, you might be aware of those basic query construct and for you to really write another query is just like pointing to an yet another table so imagine yourself as a sql developer who used to write a lot of store procedures and queries uh, back in when sql and net used to be the 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 mandatory things they were they even if they are given a new database it takes few minutes or hours maybe to understand the schema and once you understand the schema, you just can write any query because that basic construct remains the same over there, right? You can even uh, create a chart from this query. So if you, let's say, want to bring in some, some information about the, the um, virtual machines uh, by the disk type, you can also do that. You can import the uh, resource graph query into the sample dashboard, you can do all those things. Now, one of the things which I wanted to really uh, point out here is one of the best tables, which is still in preview, right? Uh, that's called resource changes. So if I say resource changes, let me say that. If I run this, that actually takes care of the query that most Azure resource changes in that subscription. So you can see that these are the things which got changed. Okay. So let me um, so let me limit it to five five records. Let me run this. And if I click on the C details, you'll find that it talks about like the resource ID, which is the my resource group network interface VM CentOS. So that's the NIC. And the NIC got updated. You can see that it got updated. And it also captures the time when it got updated. So you can easily identify, right? Timestamp is there. You can you can identify like 
it's it's really helpful like network interface got changed here so if you have seen that there's a problem with the network interface and you want to go back and understand what has happened to the network interface you might figure out that there is a change has happened now they would dig deeper to understand why this change has happened now we can make this query a bit more readable by choosing only a few columns so we can say project properties and yeah, let me close this and then i say that properties dot change it doesn't really give you that interfaces so attributes dot times tam hopefully it's correct and then properties dot change type and properties dot uh what was the let me quickly check that change attribute timestamp change attribute has a timestamp so you can see that i type change attributes dot timestamp so that's how i get inside and change type is getting that what are the changes i can just pick that up value uh new snapshot id snapshot id uh, do i need that and then target result properties changes so let me just see changes uh, i want to also bring in that value so let me do that let me properties changes so if you now run this query you can see that only few um, data is coming but you can see that property change type update if i click on that it gives me only the changes part which is a json format so it didn't format so i can even split that into multiple columns by uh, changes dot property dot ip configuration blah 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 so it's basically like going a bit deeper into that thing instead of that i just picked up the whole bunch to let you know that this has changed over a period of time there was a change by user category by user an update has happened previous value was this new value is that that so you can easily identify like what has happened over here so this is really powerful way to figure out things you can even define the time span when things got changed if you are, are doing some troubleshooting and you wanted to identify if anybody has changed the virtual machine you can choose the type as virtual machine and do a filter based on that so you can actually do a lot of stuff by choosing different filter criteria and that will give you the the thing so just remember the table type is change resource changes that's the table where uh, it, it this value is getting stored so there are so so many such tables available in the in this which you can work against we have service health resources security resources workload monitor resources so there are some are in preview uh, there will be that's mentioned in the documentation if you refer the documentation it will tell you which one is preview which one is not in preview or ga uh, and you can actually use them for your reporting ca capability and if you know kql this is quite natural to you and kql uh, is something like which is like a sql so you don't find it too much of diversion and changes like but it's a different way of writing not like we don't write select star from table name we start with the table name and then we go logical flow it's a bit different but overall that's the way how we query on large amount of semi-structured data which are basically meant for operational activity and creating alert creating notification creating dashboard this is an absolute knowledge if you're working on azure you should have a knowledge on kql so thank you very much hope you have enjoyed the resource graph discussion have a great day